Bart from The Sound Couple, and I'm off to do a solo gig without my dear wife, Stacy. She is busy this afternoon, and we had an on again, off again, now back on again request to help out with the uh, band uh, playing at a birthday party that's being hosted at a golf club. So the plan is, is this is a kind of a cut sheet, if that's the right word. No lights, no subs, just speakers, a couple mics, and it's the band will be a, two singers, a keyboard player, a bass player, and a drummer. And my plan is to even just minimize the channels. We'll probably put a kick drum mic. I haven't been at this venue before. The other thing, it's pretty close to our house, so not, you know, not terrible uh, as far as the commute. And we're getting there, we're setting up, and it's a relatively early night. I think we're done at 10. Uh, I will try to get some footage when I get there and throughout, and uh, you get to see what, well, I've done a couple other videos by myself, but uh, this will be another uh, one where Bart is solo. All right, everyone, we'll see you when we get there. is the carts are buried so we have to Okay, so I'm getting close to getting everything I need. I need to get that cord bag there. I got the mixer, I got the two-wheeler here. It's just that there's really, unless I went way down there to get it all the way up here, it's not worth it. And it's not worth two-wheeling it from here over to there. And the reason why, because I don't want to get it set in the two-wheeler, be crouching down, lifting it up. So. I'd rather just, I'm lifting from, you know, pretty even with my waist and just get it to where it's going, even though it's heavy. Um, I don't, I, I'm only using my back one time. So unless there was like a way to do it right here, I could, I could hoist it up if this car wasn't here. Um, but I don't want to have to deal with trying to two wheel around this car. And so I'm just going to go for it. Made it, no problems, just use your knees. And uh, got it right out of the cart. Um, boy, I'll probably bring in the stage boxes. Um, not that I probably need them, but technically, but it's sometimes it's just easier to get things routed. Um, and I don't have any, well, they're buried in the cord bin there, but I do have some sub snakes, but I'm not going to dig those out. These are right here. 
Uh, we'll just use those. Probably grab the mic stands and those bag of cables and we're gonna make our way in. Well, here is where we are setting up. They said anywhere in front of the fireplace. And uh, we got power in the wall, which I don't know, we can do this on one circuit, so not concerned about power. But uh, yeah, we'll keep getting, it's not a terrible building. We are doing golf courses. One thing I do is I try to park as far away from the, the course as possible. So, free tip. Um, not, I'm kind of in the field here, but then these spots start filling up. And I like to park, usually I give myself some space, uh, preferably next to a no parking space. Um, you know, just door dings and visibility. And just like to keep uh, the truck uh, out of harm's way if all possible. And then I have another tip as soon as uh, we get back in there, I'll show you explain that one to you. Okay, tip number two, and this really isn't related to golf courses, or specific to golf courses, but when I'm looking at what side to put things on for our home base for this mixer and everything, I try to look at what potential traffic patterns could be. So when I'm looking here, I don't know, she said there wouldn't be anything on the other side of that room, but I see the door, there's service door. So we're gonna go to this side because any people traffic, there's the doors there, there's a door there. So I'm probably not gonna go quite all the way out, but this is the side I'm gonna err on just because I don't know what they could be bringing out of that door and I don't want this to get in the way. Um, the only, still the only challenge is gonna be extension cords and I didn't bring the runners in. Uh, maybe if I spread, she said nobody's gonna be coming past this point. So I think if I spread the speakers out far enough and just bring the board out, just kind of create a barrier, I think is what I'll do. Yeah. All right, I better get hop in here. Um, but yeah, I think this will work. bands there uh, RM32 died which I was having a sneaky suspicion that it was um, and I have one so they stopped over drummer stopped over at my my house and picked it up because it died in the middle of the show last night for them and uh, so we'll get it fixed up for them but in the meantime they can use ours and be right on their way although he didn't have a backup scary.
There you go. The majority of the system set up. There's gonna be drums, keys, and bass. Two singers. Um, I'm only gonna mic the kick drum. And there's two hinds for the keys, I don't know. Hello! How are ya? I'm Bart. I'm Brad. Hey Brad. Hey Boris, how you taking it? That question too. So now I can get finished the input list. Okay. Um, and I still have the scene up from last night, but it'll just take a minute just to load up my default template and then get this penciled in, and we'll be ready to rock in no time. I got the scene programmed in. I'm feeling we may end up using another mix for the drums. We'll just deal with that. Probably will end up using an ear mix if we do anything, but uh, I got seven channels allocated. Um, hopefully it doesn't deviate too much from that. But I get the sense there might be another vocal coming in. We'll see.
just informed that uh, the bar doesn't close till midnight and uh, I'm wondering if I'm gonna end up just pulling back here so we can kind of sneak out of here so I might just pull up here because I don't want to have to load out through the front of the bar yeah I think I'm gonna pull the truck I think I'm gonna do it <laughs> because they are really drunk and I don't want to have to deal with moving gear through the crowd and I can almost lift everything here even though there are three steps if I can pull the van right here um, I don't have to wheel stuff through the crowd and all that so um, and then we can get the hell out of here well here's a gig recap and this time I'm doing it after the event is well over. I was driving, so it was a little bit tough at night um, when I should be focusing on the road to be doing the uh, typical recap. This gig was a birthday party. It was a 50th birthday party, and a lot of the younger folks, I'm, I'm assuming it was kids and other relatives, showed up and um, were participating in all the festivities as well. It got me thinking, what makes a good show? As far as having a good time, uh, enjoying myself because that's why the musicians do it that's why I do it that's why the guests are there for everybody to have a good time I left with a sour taste in my mouth and what it reminds me or what it reinforces that um, the crowd is a big participant in obviously in the, in the way things go and I used to play in bands years ago and I think that's why I migrated to the sound aspect because for the band they're on the front line and if things aren't quote unquote going well that's you're you're, you're in direct fire uh, for the sound guy it's you're a little bit more indirect fire in the sense that you know you you can have a good night mixing the band you you know as long as they sound good that's that's a point to feel good production technical went well that's that's a point of feeling good but nonetheless, the crowd also plays a, uh, a factor in how good your night is. And one thing I've noticed uh, over the years is this increased demand uh, from in, by some audiences. Um, and then that spills over to me. And, and that night, first of all, there was too much alcohol involved for some that just uh, can't handle it. Of course, I'm out there, so there, you know, there was a couple individuals coming at me and really just being assholes, uh, demanding that the band plays certain songs, demanding that they cut, uh, you know, stop. Um, it got to the point to where I wasn't sure where this one guy was going with this. He was pretty uh, persistent and really flipping rude and just being extremely obnoxious and he really needed to go home and, and sleep it off. But as much as I, I understand, it still doesn't make it any easier. And as you could tell at the end of the night there, I just wanted to get the hell home. I wanted to get out of there as fast as I could because it's just no fun when you got a bunch of drunk people making your night miserable in the sense that, you know, the band did everything they were supposed to do. I did everything I was supposed to. Yet, you know, a couple rot rotten apples can just ruin the whole night for you. I was getting pretty pissed and uh, I just need to you know keep that in check but it's hard not to sometimes. Again the band did great. It was kind of a pieced together band through COVID issues so they were coming in kind of cold with each other and there were people out dancing just a couple of jerks that just ruined it for the night. All right, everyone, thanks for watching as always, and please uh, subscribe or offer us feedback or like uh, so we know what content to keep bringing, and we appreciate everybody that watches our video. Take care.